My wife has very expensive tastes, so when it came to buying a bed, she found this one on Pinterest that she really liked. Sold through Wayfair.com for a whopping $10,000. Now I don't know about you, but I can't just shell out 10 Gs on a bed. So with my skill set and tools, I sought out to do one that is more unique, customized for our decor, and at a fraction of the cost. So in a weird twist of fate, my track saw just died. It was starting to smoke a little bit. I thought it was the wood that was burning, but instead it was actually over here on this little gearbox. It's totally cooked right now. That is not super ideal. I'm actually leaving for a trip in a couple days and I was hoping to have all this stuff dimensioned before I went and I don't know if that's a realistic option. I'm gonna see if I can get this one at least squared away on the bandsaw but I still have I mean, plenty more to get straight edges on and this was not how I was hoping this was gonna go. As mentioned, I was actually leaving on a vacation to Ireland when the brushes burned out on my track saw. In typical fashion, this occurred just a few months outside of warranty, but lucky for me and unluckily for my wallet, Festool has a very fast yet very expensive repair program to get me back up and running. In the meanwhile though, I just used the bandsaw, hand planes, and even an electric door planer at times to give me a straight and square edge to my pre-milled faces. One eternity later. Four corners of the platform bed, I wanted to try this joint made famous by Japanese carpenter Dylan Iwakuni. It's basically a mitered mortise and tenon with a squared drawboard peg, and since I've never done it before, I figured I'd try to do four on my first attempt. I don't know what was in my coffee that day, but my sawing was super on point, and I was staying just on my layout lines to allow for chisel refinement. I'm gonna be using the router to hog off the waste on these tenon portions. In my opinion, because I cut down to the lines, I can be a little more aggressive in my passes here. I just wanna bulk all this off and then I'll shore up my layout lines using hand tools. This is the easiest way, in my opinion, to get a really clean surface, consistency in parts, which is key and I'm gonna attack it from both sides. One of the things I don't like about a router in this situation is that it gets super messy. It's gonna shoot off a lot of dust. I've got the air cleaner running right now just in anticipation of all that. I don't have router dust collection, which I really should invest in. It's about to get pretty messy in here, so cheers to that. This is gonna look straight up insane once it's drawboard. That's gonna be super tight. I'm so stoked right now. This larger white oak panel had a pretty nasty, I don't even know what to call it. It wasn't a bark inclusion, but just a huge torn out hunk. My lumber yard was a little short on white oak when I was purchasing, otherwise I would have avoided it altogether. But since I had it, I cut an inlay patch, and as this will be one of the two leg assemblies from the bed, I'll be able to conceal it from view. That's not ideal. 
terribly wrong any given moment. Good news is the miters are tight on all sides. There's a couple gaps on the top of these 90s, but this one corner looks really, really good. I'll check for square here in a second. It's a valiant effort. Gotta say, I am feeling a little bit in over my head. First real big project since I got rid of the table saw. It's been tricky just getting everything straight and flat. Everything takes a little bit longer. And I mean, the size of this build doesn't help matters at all. This is the first day in a while where I've actually felt like I really accomplished something. I mean, the past few sessions in the shop, I would start with a bunch of components, dry fit them, get them all like going, and then at the end of the day, take it all apart and set them back on my workbench. So finally have something to assemble is just, I mean, it's a huge relief. There's some flaws. I can fully concede that, but man, like I'm really happy. Like this came out. I mean, it's only about a third of the way done, but I mean, this is really promising. So with the dado cut out now, I've got a set of inside calipers and outside calipers. And the inside calipers I just set to the measurement of the inside of the dado, and then the outside calipers are set to the inside caliper. That's gonna give me what I want ultimately to be the final dimension here. And as you can see, it's not passing on. This is a little bit too thick. So the solve for that is to use a rabbiting plane, and this rabbiting plane has a fence on it that is set to the depth of this dado, and then I'm just gonna sneak up on this cut very, very gently. I don't wanna take too much material off, so let's get my fence engaged. And I mean, that is just a tiny, tiny shaving. I'll probably take two passes, then flip the board over, and take another two passes, and check, and kinda go so on and so forth. In classic cow dog fashion, I uh, misread my measurements. For some reason, I thought the depth was six millimeters. In fact, it was 11 millimeters. So, not to worry, just bump the fence out a little bit and we'll just take it down to that surface. This board with the dado had a huge bend in it that was pretty unavoidable. If I planed it out flat, I would have been left with probably about three eighths worth of material. It's either gonna be really good or really bad. That might actually work. It's really close. I'd have to clamp it while it's kind of here, then back it out and drive it again. It's not the worst thing I've seen. Therefore, with this crowned side up, I'm basically trying to force it into flat with mechanical fasteners and clamping pressure. It's seated, which is good. I do have to like take it all apart. <laughs> Getting this back together is gonna be interesting. That is square. My seam is all nice and tight here. And the moment of truth is gonna be when I take these clamps off, if it gets all kinds of out of whack. I remember when I ordered these clamps from Bessie, they were like, why in the world would you ever need these? These are like for welders. Well, surprise. I didn't hear any crazy creaking. This is on there. I need to glue it up still, but I need to make some measurements from here here, do some finish uh, touch up. So I wanna take this apart and then I'm gonna use epoxy because as you saw, that was not easy to get this all together. So epoxy at least will have the nice long open time and that should help me get this together. Onward and upward. With the leg assembly apart, I can throw in some angular details, which I think really elevates the look and makes it more interesting as opposed to the Wayfair bed, which was just a bunch of hard right angles, which in my opinion is just a bit boring visually.
In the trend of not using screws in my woodworking, note it said screws and not bolts, which you'll see in a second, once the epoxy is cured, I'll remove the screws and replace them with Miller dowels. The hope with this piece is that over time, the overall weight of the bed and the weight of two people and three dogs will coax this into staying flat. Now, wood movement is a fickle mistress, so this could potentially cause some checking down the road, and if that's the case, the nice thing is that these leg assemblies are ultimately removable in the event I need to do any spot repairs. Now, all the finishing products I used on this bed were supplied by the Real Milk Paint Company, starting with their Carnuba Wax to lubricate these threaded inserts. I've been working with Real Milk Paint for years now, and I'm a true believer in their products. Their dark tongue oil allowed me to instantly color match the bed to the white oak drawer fronts on our dresser that have a darker patina to them that have developed over time. All their products are non-toxic and food safe, and while I'm not eating food off of my bed frame, it's nice to have all natural products in places where I'm spending significant time. Use coupon code COWDOGCRAFTWORKS for 10% off all products on their website. The headboard is going to be a wall-mounted feature instead of attached to the bed frame itself, and I'm going with this slab of Norfolk Island pine that was harvested by my buddy PJ Fetcher just a few houses down from mine. I loved the idea that I could have a piece of wood with a story to tell. Stay tuned for future videos as I have another section of this same slab that'll turn into a new dining table in the coming months. Since this tree has about a million branches, it has a ton of knots, so I did a bunch of random geometric inlays to handle the knots, cracks, and bark inclusions to make planing it by hand a lot less frustrating and make it more stable and resilient over time. Then for finish, I'm going with the Real Milk Paint Company's Brown Chestnut Wood Wax. This is a variation on their Plain Wood Wax, which is a blend of Carnuba Wax and Walnut Oil, a favorite of mine for light finishes, except it has a heavy brown tint to it. While I loved the way this slab looked natural with a hand plane finish, it really wouldn't have matched the color of the platform bed, so the brown gave it almost a walnut-like consistency and accentuated the compression figure a ton. The nice thing about their wood wax is that it's usable within 24 hours as opposed to some of their other drying oils, which can take days before being dry to the touch. Then with all that done, I had trimmed and fit some pine bed slats, which I actually reused from my old bed, and finished all the touchable surfaces with RMPC's aforementioned standard wood wax as a final touch. So how much did this bed cost me? Well, in reality, about 1200 bucks in raw materials. But also in reality, probably at least another 8800 bucks in tools, tool repairs, and most importantly, time education and experience. But listen, if I can do this in a one car garage without a table saw, you can probably figure it out too. And with it all said and done, I'm super proud of how this all turned out. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks. Hey babe, you wanna come test out this bed? Thank you.